Hi there. Welcome to the Schwoben's Nest. My name is Sandra, and today I am hosting a Christmas into Winter Decor Challenge where we take some Christmas supplies and create winter with them. Let's get started. I'm sure you can recognize what this is. It is a Dollar Tree sign, the ornament shape, and I'm going to use this and just cut it up to create something different. I want to give a shout out to my sweet subscriber, Kimberly, who sent me two huge boxes of Dollar Tree supplies and craft supplies and winter supplies, Christmas supplies, all sorts of different things that she's no longer using. So thank you so much, Kimberly, if you're watching Watching today, I truly, truly appreciate you. I have those two pieces cut off and now I'm just going to straighten out the bottom of the piece that I cut off, so the larger one, and this is going to be the saucer for the cup. Using another piece of sign from something different, I'm going to cut out a handle for my cup and saucer. I used the bottom of a paint can for the larger circle and now I'm just using the ornament top as the smaller circle. I'll just cut these out using my box cutter again. This is the back side of the sign or the front side depending on how you look at it. I'm using some popsicle sticks to glue the pieces all together. If you're new to my channel, perhaps coming over from the playlist, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. If you like what you see so far, I would love it if you could hit that red subscribe button and help my YouTube channel grow. I painted the whole thing white because I had something in mind, but I ended up changing my mind, which is something I do quite often when I'm crafting. So this is a step that you could skip if you're recreating this project. I'm going to use this beautiful brown paper that has a wood grain effect on the cup. I wanted this to be rustic to blend in with the other two projects I'm doing today as well. I just used a regular glue stick to apply the paper to the sign. This is a printable that I created. It will be available on my website. The link is down in my description box. I printed it out on white cardstock and then cut out the shape of the cup, but just about an inch smaller all the way around. And as you can see here, I'm just using a glue stick again to apply it. To make the sign look a little bit more rustic, I'm using a little chip brush and some black paint, and I'm just gonna go around the edges of the saucer down at the bottom, which you can see that I left white. So this is the only thing that you would need to paint white if you were recreating this project. I'm just pulling the brush in from the edge and giving it sort of a feathery look, and I'll do the same on the top. Then I'm just gonna run my brush right through the saucer just to distress it a little bit more. I'm going to continue on with the same type of distressing, pulling my brush in from the edges all around the white portion of the sign, and that will just blend those two looks together. I am also going to drag my brush across the sign, but just very lightly, just to blend it in so it's not so stark white. The last detail is to use some jute twine and totally go around the handle of the cup. That's just going to give it some extra texture. And then I'm going to take the same jute twine and just run one string all the way around the perimeter of the sign just to tie it all together. The last thing I'm doing is just going to be adding a jute twine hanger, but you could put a sawtooth hanger on the back of this if you didn't want the twine, or you could use something completely different like a ribbon. I decided not to put a bow on this because I didn't want it to be too frou-frou. I don't relate rustic to bows, so, but if you wanted to put a bow on yours, by all means, go right ahead. To cover up the back part and especially the glitter on it, I'm just going to use some hot glue and some craft paper. Then I'll use my craft knife to trim off the edge. I hope you're enjoying the project so far. Make sure you go down to my description box or the pinned comment and click on the playlist link so you can see what all of my other fellow creators have made. 
this is also one of the Dollar Tree signs that I got from my sweet subscriber, Kimberly. Thanks again, Kimberly. I'm just going to use this little scraper that I have, and I think these are available at the Dollar Tree as well, and gently just pry off the bottom two windows. I don't need those for this project. Then I'm just going to sand down any of the rough edges and make it nice and smooth. The great thing about using chalk paint is that it has a really thick consistency and it will camouflage all of these little sort of carved out images that you see on this sign. So I'm going to go on fairly thickly with this and then set it aside to dry completely. I want this to look like a log cabin. So the first thing I'm going to do is use my pencil and I'm going to press fairly firmly to get a nice dark line. I'm not going to measure these lines at all. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and go all the way to the top. Using a short and stubby chip brush, I am dunking it in the Americana Walnut Gel Stain. This is my favorite type of stain to use. It's really easy to work with and it's water soluble so it comes off your hands super easy. This is a technique that I learned a long time ago from Holly over at Hot Humble Pie and this gives you a really wonderful wood grain look. Now don't be perfect with it just kind of start and stop in different areas you can see that I'm trying to make it look a little darker in some areas and lighter in others. So keep working with it until you get the look you like. Once the stain was dry I went over the lines that I drew with the pencil with a black colored pencil and this just brought out the look of logs even more. I wanted the window to pop a little bit so I'm just going over it with a different color. This is sort of a gray beige color. It's clay from Martha Stewart chalk paints and I got this on sale for six bucks at Michael's last year and it's still going strong. The bottom of this sign had a cutout for snow, but I wanted it to be a little higher, so I'm just using my white again and drawing some mounds of snow. Then I'm just going to touch up any of the brown stain that got on my white roof here, and that will make it look nice and clean. Using my Craft Smart oil based paint pen in white, I wrote the words Ski Lodge just very simply. Kind of looks a little bit like a farmhouse style or maybe a Ray Dunnish kind of look. And now I'm just going over the letters and cleaning them up. Again, just using this freehand, I'm going to write Sleigh Rides, Toboggans, and Cocoa and Coffee Bar. I'm going to have this also available as a free printable. Even though I did it by hand, I created it on my computer with a nice brown wood background in case you wanted to use it for your project. To make the letters pop and look a little bit more three-dimensional, I'm just taking a black fine point Sharpie marker and drawing a shadow line on the left side of the letters. So you can see here, I'm just kind of starting in the center of the letter and making sure that I go all the way to the top for straight letters, just doing the left side. I'll continue this for the words at the bottom. To cover up the hole from the hanger, I'm just going to glue on a little wood cutout from the Dollar Tree. It's just a little snowflake, and I'm just going to leave it the natural wood color. To finish off this project, I'm going to glue the sign to this wooden box that I had already painted white a while ago. This was just something I found at the thrift store. And I'm just going to glue it on and then fill the inside with some winter greens. And I think this project turned out really cute. I found this cute little wooden sleigh at the thrift store just before Christmas. I think I paid $2.99 for it. I'm going to start by giving it a coat of black chalk paint and I'm going to also do the rails to refresh them. 
once the black paint dried, I went over it with my DIY chalk paint, but just the sleigh part on the top. The rails I'm going to keep black. The reason I did the black was so none of the red would bleed through. Even though it had a lot of varnish on it, I didn't want to take a chance and putting the black on first really does help. Once the white was dry, I just took my Sharpie marker and drew some little accent lines all the way around the sleigh. This is probably about not quite a quarter of an inch around. You can do it as low or as high as you want, but I thought this little detail would really bring out the lines of this cute sleigh. I picked up this baby blanket from the Dollarama store a really long time ago and the reason I bought it is because of the gray, the pattern and that it's really nice and cozy. So I'm going to go ahead and use this as a little blanket on the back of my sleigh. I decided not to glue it down so I could change out the decor whenever I wanted to. Now I'm taking one of the Dollar Tree car wash towels, which are super soft and white and fluffy. And I'm just going to cut out a couple of squares, glue them together and make them look like little pillows. Then I'll add them into the sleigh. Again, not gluing them down, just placing them in. My little sleigh needs a driver, so I decided to use two styrofoam balls and make a little snowman. I'm using a bamboo skewer and I'm going to push it all the way through the large one and then push the little one on top of it as well. Then I'm going to leave the stick down at the bottom so I can hang on to it while I'm decorating it. I put some of my white paint in a dish and now I'm using some of this white sand that you can get from the Dollar Tree. I poured about a teaspoonful into my paint and now I'm just going to mix it up and see what kind of texture I get. The texture of it looks really awesome. The only thing I was concerned about was that once the paint dried, if perhaps the sand would fall out of it, but it didn't. It turned out really amazing. I just love the look of all of this texture. I am so excited to have found this technique. Now I'm taking another little piece of that baby blanket and I'm going to glue it onto my snowman's head and make him a little hat. I struggled a little bit with this part. I wasn't quite sure if I should make a tube first and then try to fit it on. And you can see a little tube up at the top there that I did try, but then it was too small. So I ended up just gluing the fabric right onto his little head and then gluing it together sort of into a cone shape and then draping it down over one side. I like using these little upholstery tacks as eyes and buttons and then I take one of them and I glue it backwards to make his nose and now I'm just painting it with sort of a rusty orange color and there you've got a little snowman. I cut off two pieces of branch from my frosted winter decor branches and set him inside the sleigh, added a few more snowflakes and he looks so cute. I hope you enjoyed my Christmas into winter projects today and you'll let me know which one was your favorite. Thanks again for watching. I truly appreciate it. Make sure you click the playlist link and check out what the other creators have done as well. You won't be disappointed. Make sure you hit that red subscribe button if you haven't already, the like button too because that gets me noticed more on YouTube, and the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Bye for now!